HR Consulting Services. I'm the host and the moderator for the show. Today's show is about hashtag women power. This movement is started by Sir DK Bakshi, who is a global leader, a famous global personality, who was recently honored by women power. Women empowerment is something which is very, very close to him. That is why this global show is there. And in very short span of time, we have reached places and we are present in more than 20 countries. Mr. Bakshi's mission is to unite 100,000 women by the end of 2021 and 1 million women by 2024. And again, I am mentioning that I am thankful to him that he chose me as one of the women in this initiative. A huge round of applause for TK Bakshi, sir. Savazdi Krab Bakshi, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity to host this wonderful show at your platform. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Zoom. We are at Zoom today, which is Facebook Live and Global TV Live. So today, I have two beautiful women with us on the hot seat who will be sharing their journey, their challenges, their success, their stories, and how they have crossed the barriers in their journey. Women empowerment has become the need of the hour. More jobs, safety, gender equality. Today's women need to be empowered in every possible way. So our first speaker is Ms. Devjani Roy, an industry stalwart who brings with her rich experience from HR background. She is a TEDx speaker, multi-award winner, currently serving Mind Your Fleet. A lot to speak about her. She has been featured seven times with Business Manager Magazine. And wherever you see HR talk, talks going on, she is definitely one of the speakers there. How many lives she has touched, she herself doesn't know. She writes articles for HR magazines. She is a visiting faculty with premier institutes and many, many more things you know, in her kitty. If I keep talking about her, one hour will be less and I'm very confident about it. So let's listen to the other side of, <clears throat> sorry, let's listen to the other side of Devjani Roy today. Can you see this excitement at my face today while I was talking about her? It's all because, you know, whenever I used to talk, uh, whenever I used to see her at a platform talking, I used to think, will I be able to ever host her? And today she is sitting in front of me at the hot seat and my dream came true, all because of Bakshi sir and this initiative of Global Talent Consulting. Welcome, Dweet Jani. Namaskar. Tumi ke mana achi. Our next speaker is Dr. Supriya from Italy. She is a keynote speaker of global repute, author of six books, and an angel investor. She speaks seven languages, loves to travel, and rejuvenates herself with golf and martial arts. Yes, golf and martial arts. As a multinational management consultant and corporate trainer, she has been elevating companies ranging from SMEs to multi-million dollar MNCs across Africa, Asia, Europe, and North America for more, uh, for more than a decade uh, from now. Her vision is to illuminate the world with magical experiences. I think beautiful vision, uh, vision I should say, Supriya, you are having. Uh, illuminate the world with magical experiences. Welcome, Sukri Supriya, to the talk show. Dona Sera, Komate Lapasi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such a privilege and honor to be here. Thank you so much. My pleasure hosting these wonderful ladies today. So let us uh, start with the session. And uh, my first question to Devjani, first of all, to you. Our audience would love to know Devjani as a women HR expert. Ah, well, <laughs> I was so hoping, Shafali, that you will break the bond and start with something a little more non-traditional. <laughs> but nevertheless, I guess this tag of HR expert is not going to leave me in this lifetime. Never. So, I'm, I'm going to start off by just saying that um, I, I, I'm a very normal human being. Um, I, I believe in keeping life simple uh, and grounded. Um, I have lived, as I said, 50 golden years of a century. Um, very, very rocking 50 years, actually. Um, I did a lot of things which when I started off, I didn't, I never thought 
that I would actually be doing, um, HR being one of them, incidentally, uh, because my entry into the HR domain was more by default and not by design. Um, you know, I, I was right from childhood, I was being brought up uh, with the aspiration of family and as well as some of it, my borrowed aspiration of uh, either becoming an academician. Uh, you know, I was, I was very fond of um, research right from start. Uh, and the other one that I really, really wanted to do is I was supposed to get into the Indian administrative services. I was known as somebody who had great organizing power. I was academically well-groomed. So it was just, you know, a foregone conclusion, even in the family, that that was what was going to be. Uh, however, uh, you know, uh, as cliched as it sounds, band proposes, God disposes. And that's exactly what happened to me. And some of it I brought upon myself. I think there was a rebel streak in me, which, you know, I never realized in the early years of life till I was in college and it hit me real hard. The Mandal Commission, I don't know if um, all of you are familiar with it, but that was a turning point um, in our generation when I was in college. The Mandal Commission rule and, and the law was passed during our time when I was in my graduation years and it came as an absolute shock and I overnight became and a student activist leading the movement from the front. And uh, not only did I get out the parliament, I even sat cross-legged in front of the AIR building in Parliament Street. I led a lot of mochas uh, from St. Stephen's to Hindu to LSR. I was in LSR at that time. And um, it, it was a dream I was uh, you know, living in a sense that I had found this, this new high of empowerment and uh, some, something which was coming to me so easy, you know, this women, and, and, and the student movement that I couldn't think of anything else at that point of time till the point I actually got arrested and there was an FIR which was lodged in my name and there were a lot of people around me who told me now that you've got an FIR in your name you can never sit for the civil services so there it went you know in a, in a jiffy I think the world had gone a different way um, however the world of academics was still there before me I decided that I will continue to pursue it. I was in JNU doing my international relations. Um, I topped JNU. I got the four-year Jwala Nehru Trust Scholarship for Cambridge. Um, again, fate played folly. Uh, I went out to Cambridge. I did my PhD, started off with my, uh, uh, you know, started off with, I finished my MPhil, started off with my first year of PhD. And when you go to places like Cambridge and you study, you know, the world turns a, a 360 degree for you. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic um, a place, you walk down corridors where you know, you know, the gurus of the world, you know, you had an Einstein statue, you had a, you had Jawaharlal Nehru statue, you had so many of these visionaries, including Rabindranath Tagore statue. So you didn't know what you were meeting at that time. Um, however, it was a scholarship that I had earned from JNU. Uh, I had signed a bond which said that after completing, or I had to come back and serve uh, two years as an associate professor. And if I were to break the bond for any reason, I could no longer pick it up and start again. Unfortunately, due to extreme pressing reasons on the personal front, I was an only child of my parents. Uh, my dad, um, you know, because of a very, very, uh, a very active uh, career in the private domain in pharmaceutical industry and being a chain smoker, I think brought it upon himself. He at that time had three massive coronary attacks. And because of that, I almost lost him, you know, at that point of time, scholarship, no scholarship, Cambridge, no Cambridge. It didn't make a difference. I just broke the bond and came back. And when I did that, there were two of my most belong, most, most cherished dreams. Um, you know, what I grew up with, what I spent 20 years or 22 years pursuing had suddenly come to a knot and I was facing, at, uh, facing a crossroad. And worse still, my friends who had actually done the graduations and from school had already moved ahead. They were already in professional areas. They were already doing well for themselves. So the word, you know, what was staring in my face is now what? Uh, you know, and, and what I did was I started actually appearing for a lot of these open entrance exams for the multinationals as well as the Navaratnas, you know, the private uh, public sectors that we had. And as I said, I was accomplished um, academically. So I qualified in both Steel Authority, NALCO, as well as a couple of other uh, organizations. NALCO was very exciting because it was a low key public sector, but plush with funds. Uh, it had a, a partnership with Alcoa of Canada. It had very interesting processes. And I was very, very fascinated with the entire process of smelting, bauxite iron mining, uh, and the terrain in which that particular company was situated. So I joined them as the first member of management trainee, had no idea about HR till then. 
So, uh, you know, the only department I was familiar with was marketing because my dad had been a marketer throughout his life. And when at the end of my 11 months of assessment center in that company, I, I was given a choice. I said marketing. I would like to be part of marketing. The director HR, rather personnel, he was a director of personnel at that time. He turned around and he said, are you sure? Because this is industrial marketing. It's not selling soaps, soaps and shampoos. It's not the glamour business that you probably are thinking about. This is industrial marketing. You have to carry ingots or aluminum ingots and move into areas, which is not a good thing to do for a woman at that point of time. So I said, okay, if it's not marketing, you tell me. You tell me what, what you think as, a, as the assessor, I should be good for. They said human resource. And to me, Shafali, honestly, at that point of time, human resource was very boring. I didn't realize anything more than probably coordinating trainings or doing a bit of pedal pushing on paper, doing what is known as performance forms to be filled up in, on an annual basis, a little bit of grievance handling, a little bit of suggestion schemes is what typically what happens in the public sector. You know, and that didn't fill me with any amount of glory to be part of that department. However, I was told that I should give it a chance. And I did give it a chance. And that was year 1994. And here I am sitting today. I wouldn't exchange what I have gone through in these interim years. Uh, and I, I am so grateful to the director personnel, Mr. B.D. Singh of Nalco, as well as every other person who told me that I was cut out for an HR career. I trusted them, I believed them, and I went along with the flow. Uh, thankfully, the rebel in me didn't surface at that time because I probably would have lost more than I would have gained. And that started my HR career. In the course, I went in for HR, um, uh, you know, accreditation from FMS Delhi. I think I did everything that was required um, uh, in my 26 years of career, uh, which made me into the person that I am. But more than anything else, as an HR expert, and I don't claim any fame to being an expert, honestly, I'm still a learner. I'm still learning. That I we actually, we know about you, ma'am. And uh, I feel that women empowerment started for you uh, from ages. Women empowerment is talked about a lot these days, but for you, after hearing you, your journey, I think it started long, long back for, for you. So that, that is true. I don't think we had jargons like empowerment and uh, equality and uh, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. We had none of that at that time. But we were, we were strong women. Right. First and foremost, we were strong women who knew our mind, who understood the direction that our lives had to take, who understood what resilience meant, what adaptability meant, and what actually facing adversities and converting them into advantages for yourself what it actually meant, because we lived that life. It was not a story that we read somewhere. It was not a narration that we heard from somebody else. It was not a TEDx speech that I actually heard from anybody else, but I went through it every day in and day out for in my initial years of corporate career. And I think that really made the person that I am today, because I, I in all humility, I was very fortunate that in my journey, I met with superlative people, whether in the, uh, in, in the garb of my bosses, my superior officers, my chairman in some companies with whom I worked very closely, my peer group, you know, who had been, who had extended themselves beyond any comparison, even my teams, my juniors, my subordinates, you know, they have gone out of their way to make me what I am because I sincerely believe you are as good as your team. And that's the philosophy that I've carried throughout life. Um, I still, you know, even the first management training that I hired in um, uh, uh, Bharti Telecom. Today, he's a vice president in Yes Bank. Even today, he picks up his uh, you know, phone and at every juncture, he'll say, ma'am. And I say, you stop calling me ma'am now, you know? And, and uh, if I start call, you know, taking the number of my juniors who've made it big, uh, I can simply sit back and I can bask in that glory. I know, ma'am, a lot uh, is to be you know, uh, heard from you in my coming questions. I would like to stop you here because I don't want to reveal those aspects here only in this question. <laughs> so coming to Supriya, Supriya, we would like to know you as a professional. Thanks, Shefali. And I'm already humbled with the introduction of uh, Devjani with the great uh, history that she has been and the future that she is looking to build up. I'll start with myself. I call myself a global citizen. And as Shefali mentioned, with the mission, on a mission to illuminate the world with magical experiences. So here are the key words, magical experiences. Where do they come from? Magic comes from my personal life. 
as in I'm still a strong believer in the power of magic, which means that Cinderella is still my favorite story. And I still remember and I still do watch Cinderella. And at the same time, the word experience comes from what I do professionally. So I'm a customer experience alchemist. I help companies formulate and implement their business strategies to provide excellent customer experiences, which include their internal customers in terms of their employees and their external customers or the patrons in terms of the entire stakeholder set. So that's what I do, magical experiences. And I am also looking forward to translating this magical experiences from the corporate into the lives of people personally. Because anyone we meet, whether it's at your office or at your home, you're having a conversation or an interaction with your house help or with your driver, you're going out to buy vegetables, doing anything with your family members, everything is an experience. So this experience might or might not be positive all the times, but I strongly believe that we can make it magical. I'll take a small example. It's a personal example. My mom wasn't feeling too well in last December. So uh, she was unwell for a period of about 20 days, which was a lot for me. I mean, seeing her uh, uh, go through uh, such pain wasn't easy for me. I felt like pouring out at times, but I had to remain strong. I could not do that in front of her. And that was the worst part of that experience. My mom not being well. And at the same time, I took this opportunity to create a magical experience in terms of the bond, in terms of taking it as an opportunity, as the time to share with her that we've not been able to have so far. So uh, she's too much into biochemistry and biomolecules. We spend a good time talking and reading about those stuff. I also learned knitting, which I never thought I would. I mean, she had been doing knitting before 20 years. She hadn't touched what do you call those uh, those things, the wool and the stuff for 20 years. And then she taught me how to knit. I knitted a muffler for myself. So that's the power ex experiences, you know, building the magic and you have it within you. You can do it anytime and anywhere with anyone you want. And for, about my books, I want to tell you about my book. My first book, it was in 2018. My first book was in 2018 and it's called A Cup of Success. Now, why is it called A Cup of Success? Uh, just like in India, we say a cup of tea and tea is something which is a part of each and every household, different types of tea we are used to consuming. So a cup of success, everyone can have it all, which means success is not only meant for the privileged few, the Jeff Bezos, the Kiran Majumdar Shaws or other people of the world. Success is meant for each and every individual because it is the way we define it. There is no one definition for success. So it depends on us on how we define it. And I, again, strongly believe in the fact that success is meant for all and it's not a privilege of the few. And to my most recent book, which is called um, Buddham Sharanam, A Psychological Quest. And it was during this pandemic when we realized, okay, the entire world has come to a halt after the seismic vibrations of COVID-19. So, okay, what do we do now? What are we going through mentally, emotionally, physically? And can things like meditation be a part of our psychological quest of leading a peaceful and a purposeful life? Apart from that, uh, I'll talk about my qualifications. So I started studying aerospace engineering as a 100% scholar. And how did I land up in aerospace engineering? Very simple, just as any child would have this fantasy of how do the airplanes fly or what makes them fly? Why can't I fly? So that was the idea of studying aerospace engineering, which did a great job to the left part of my brain, but for the right part of my brain and also um, drawing uh, inspiration from my dad, who I always used to see in suit and tie, I said, okay, so how do I fly? is a different question. How do airplanes fly? I could understand in my aerospace engineering, but how do I fly will come from management. So I studied management. I studied MBA at the University of Iowa in the United States. I'm also an IAM alumnus and it uh, culminated. I won't say it culminated. It continued into a doctorate in management in Switzerland. And I'm still looking forward to studying more and probably law is what I would want to, corporate law is what I would want to study next. Apart from this, um, I like to forage for wild mushrooms. Crashed on the I can't listen more because whatever you have told me, you know, it is so inspiring. Uh, I'm getting goosebumps, you know, knowing about your books, the journey, how you started this uh, aeronautical engineering, and the magical experiences uh, which you share. 
I think uh, that's really beautiful on, on part of both of you ladies. You are so empowered. And without uh, listening to your real life experiences, I'm already feeling empowered. I'm okay. sorry, I'm cutting you down here. And the magical experiences did is so true. Just like she said, it's not for only successful people or make people. It's for everybody. It's for real life. It's what you pick up from real life and make it into magic for yourself. Uh, so Priya, kudos to you for that. I think it's it's one of the most fundamental and beautiful philosophies that we all need to imbibe within ourselves. Lovely. It is lovely. Absolutely. Full marks to both of you. So uh, Devjani, my next question to you. Uh, what I heard from your journey, uh, you have been uh, into a lot of uh, struggles. Then uh, you did a lot of education. You empowered yourself. You inbuilt that confidence in yourself. Uh, can you give, because what happens is our human brain, like Supriya just mentioned about left brain and right brain. Our brain works well when we have some real life examples and real life stories. Any challenge you remember which you faced in your life and how did you overcome that challenge? Yeah, okay. Um, well, my left and right brain actually both underwent a lot of catastrophes, to be very honest. Challenges and challenges and more challenges. So um, I'll start on the physical side, okay? Uh, uh, let's understand something that being a woman and being a woman who is not, who's tenacious and who's not set off, uh, you know, um, to get into any space, right? Uh, I mean, I remember risk taking came very naturally to me. Okay. I was never uh, daunted by any opportunity. Um, the only thing that I was scared of um, to a certain extent was really not giving my best to whatever I would do, but not anything beyond that. Um, as a result of which, I think it played advantages to me. Um, I actually got a lot of opportunity in different areas when I started off with my career, finally in HR. A lot of stuff that I ultimately landed up doing, um, many would, uh, you know, shirk. Um, and I'll give you two, three very critical examples. And it meant a lot to me because it actually molded my career. It molded my responses thereafter. Uh, in Malco itself, in the, in the third year when I was in Malco, uh, we started having our wage negotiation, okay? Now, our wage negotiation is a massive issue for the public sector, okay? And it's generally is, is a complete standoff. There was a complete standoff between the union and the union leaders and the management on the other side. Now, I was identified as somebody on the management side because I was a management trainee and I had just been confirmed as a junior manager at that point of time. And uh, irrespective of any good counsel, a lot of people told me that when things are so virulent and when uh, you know emotions are flying high ma'am you should stall your visits to inside the factory now i didn't want to listen to that because i i inherently believe in the goodness of people i said what what harm can come to me come on it's part of my responsibility in hr to go and find out if the supervisors are doing okay if the workmen are doing all right if the working conditions are perfect and there i went walking into the smelting factory the first thing i know is i was get out i was get out and for 48 hours, I was put under lock and key, okay? Made into a pawn in a sense that at every moment, the supervisors and the leaders of the union were actually com continuously telling the union uh, uh, to the unit management that we want to actually physically assault her. We can do anything to her. You please break this problem of wage negotiation, give us our due. Otherwise, anything can happen to ma'am ma and you will be responsible for it. So on one hand, they kept on threatening the management and putting them on their back feet. On the other hand, believe me, Shafani, they were treating me to local savories and chai and coffee and treating me like royalty. And the kind of time I spent 48 hours, I actually got to know so much about them. You know, I struck a rapport with them so hard that for me as an HR manager, it became a cakewalk from there onwards. But imagine if I had been fearful about it. I would have never, ever faced this particular situation. I would have never understood that, you know, a real courage and your ability to actually look straight into the eye of the other person and talk from a genuine point of view actually convinces the other side that, yes, you are not somebody who's faking it. And it's important that, just like Supriya said, it's like a magical environment that you create for yourself. You know, that's magic that happens. So this was one very, very fearful experience that I had. Again, in one of the organizations, we had uh, a manufacturing facility which went through the Naxal-ridden uh, areas of, uh, you know, Andhra Pradesh and Orissa. Okay, and uh, unfortunately, 
in those days, I'm talking about 98, uh, you know, 97, 98, um, we had to land at a station. There was a, you know, there were remote locations. So you didn't have air or anything at that time, okay? So you had to land up at, in, at a godforsaken time at about 2.30 in the night by a train. And then one of the ambassador cars, okay, would come to fetch you and take you through that Naksal ridden terrain up to one of your guest houses up on the top of a hill. And during one such visit, actually i mean thing we, we used to you know count ourselves lucky if we had made it without any instance but unfortunately during one of those uh, instances i actually met with one of those people in a sense that we had about a group of 30 30 35 people completely you know with those open swords and those uh, you know the, the the torch lanterns in their hands and they were coming right down the path when my ambassador was going my driver was so scared he immediately deserted the car and ran away. The first thing he did was that. And I was left sitting in the back seat, not knowing what to do. Okay. I was numb for a few minutes. Then I got down because they completely yelled out and they were, they were ferocious to look at. Okay. But at the same time, I think what really made me understand is that if I tried anything hunky dory or if I tried anything too smart, then that would be the last day of my life. All I had to do was to really appeal in good sense to these people and make them understand that, you know, I had nothing to do with what they were going through. And if I could, in my own way, car carry some message which could do them well, then possibly I would love to do that. And that's exact. And, and luckily, I understood the language. I had learned Oriya by that time. So I could transverse with them in Oriya language. They were, you know, they were not convinced fully, but I think something inherently again worked. And you I think being fearless was one thing which helped you out all through. They, they always understood that they, 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 there is no agenda here. And what she's actually saying is something which is, uh, you know, coming from raw. It's coming from my stomach. It's coming from my heart. It's not coming shadowed with any kind of an agenda. So these were initial instances where there were challenges of the physical kind. There have been many other challenges. There have been challenges like much later in 2009, 2010, I went over to do a uh, merger in Pakistan in Islamabad. And, um, you know, they gave me three crores of insurance, additional insurance, just for undertaking those three days of tour. Okay, to the multinational that I was working for. And to make matters worse, my boss was a Chinese lady who refused to go to Pakistan. And we always thought that the Chinese and the Pakistanis were good friends. So my obvious question was, why wouldn't you go? She said, no, I'm fearful. I still think you have a better chance of uh, you know, not talking it, then probably I would, I would not, I would falter. So I remember turning that, that page around, I acquired that company, some 200 software engineers, believe me, nothing different from what- Mama, I are. think here, courageous and being fearless are two things which I'm picking from the examples which you are sharing. If one is courageous, full of courage, and if one is fearless, sky is the limit. Yes, I think that, uh, that is the right message. Uh, Risk-taking ability, and being honest about your purpose. I think these are two things which you shouldn't shy away from because if, if you're trying to play, if you're trying to play hooky, if you're trying to actually feign or pretend, believe you me, the other side understands that beyond the point. Um, other uh, challenges, part of the job, being an only board member, woman board member in a group of 15 people. Okay, I walked into the board. There were some non-vegetarian jokes my fellow colleagues were cracking. And they would suddenly, you know, there would be hushed silence. They would look around and look at me as if, you know, what is this transloper coming into the being? And I would just say, listen, remain agnostic of your sex, man. I can't be apologetic about the fact that I was born a woman. And if you think that you can't crack a joke because of my presence, that's your problem, not mine. And courageous, boldness, fearlessness, everything a woman has to have to reach to the boardroom, to, uh, you know, fight out the daily day-to-day -day issues is what I'm learning from your stories. And I feel, you know, if somebody else would have been in your place, if she's not that courageous, it is very tough. Uh, so thank you for sharing these experiences. I'll just come to Supriya. I would like you to quote, I mean, the real examples as real as Devjani just mentioned, uh, you know, while the challenges which you faced and how did you overcome those? Only real life examples if you can share. I'm already like, oh, wow, <laughs> listening to Devjani and the stories and the examples from her life. So as uh, you might have already gotten an idea that I do not have a great story of an 
Dr. Richard, a driver's daughter turning into a, uh, or winning a beauty pageant or a conductor's daughter uh, being an IS officer. It's a very normal story born with a silver spoon to progressive parents. And uh, the catch here is uh, as a child, I always got what I wanted. So I named it and I had it. However, the world outside wasn't so, whether it was school or college or coming to the corporate world. And how and when I realized this first was in my job at the age of 21, I found myself in the boardroom, not as a board member, but yes, I found myself in the boardroom as the management interface manager. That was my first job and the youngest and the only female in the organization. So among those uh, 18 oracular men and me at the age of 21 with hardly any corporate experience and hardly any knowledge as compared to what they had in terms of their experience. I mean, their experience was over 30 years, more than my age. I found myself in a thinking what to do. I was dwindling as to, okay, should I do this? Should I not do this? How to carry myself actually among these people? That were, that's how I was thinking. However, there were two things that happened. One was my determination to stay that, okay, I am here to stay. Whether you like it or you don't like it, I hold my space and I'm here to stay. For this, I had to speak up several times for which the courage didn't come easy. I had to think 10 times before I went out and I spoke. I should not say something that's wrong because as it is young and being a girl, these are the two things which weren't easy. So just as uh, Devjani mentioned of non-vegetarian jokes being cracked, my case was a little different as in the term, uh, the employees being abused in front of me in a way that I did not like. Probably I was soft-hearted or something. That's the reason or whatever it was. I had not seen something like that before. So I had a conversation with the CEO thereafter. Okay, Mr. So, 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 this is what I do not like. And could we have a better way of doing this? Because I'm sure that even the employees don't like it that way. And I was happy enough to see the change in that person. I mean, the male ego and then the position, both are certain things that had to be targeted which I was lucky enough to see the change in the person, in the demeanor, in the way the employees were treated thereafter, which also made me feel comfortable that I'm sitting in an environment which is conducive to others' progress, which respects others, and which also respects me as an individual and as a female. Then the second instance of the same boardroom is uh, thanks to my uh, HR head or the HR manager in that way at that time, because uh, again, being the youngest and being the female, not having that knowledge at that point in time, which those men had, I was still thinking before I contributed anything or before I shared any ideas. And that's when, after all the men had spoken, I would still uh, think, okay, shall I speak or shall I not speak? And then this HR manager would always uh, take care that I had spoken my part. And he would always come up and say, okay, there is someone who hasn't spoken yet. So that's when I realized that, yes, okay, they are also holding the space for me. So I'm here to stay at the same time. They are also supporting me. They are holding the space for me. And another instance from um, another organization that I worked with, uh, where, uh, again, at the age of 24, I had people over 50s reporting into me. That was the kind of role. And I was in the habit of writing emails uh, with the initials. If it's Supriya Sharma, I would say SS and I would go on with the email. And then there was one person, he was the head of finance who never replied to my email. And I always wondered what's wrong, does he not check his emails? And then I would call him up, he would not even pick up the call. I went personally to see him to his office and then he was like, uh, don't you know how to write emails? That, that's how he said to me, I, and I was taken aback. For that moment, I did not know what to say because as a child, who was brought up in a manner that I always had what I wanted. I was in the habit of, you know, not listening to people and especially not something, uh, I won't say insulting, but yes, I did not like the way it was spoken to me. And then we had a conversation. I stood myself there and then we had a conversation. I said, okay, what's wrong in writing emails this way? And he said, you're not writing dear sir and this, this, this. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. So, sir, that's what you want me to write. I don't even write emails to the CEO that way. And you want me to write emails to you like that. So those were the kind of conversations we had, which weren't easy at that point in time, because there was one part of me which was telling me, okay, Supriya, you might want to fit in the manner, the, the way the corporate works or the way these people want you to behave and want you to uh, work. However, there was the other part of me which was asking me not to... Uh, uh, not to give up in front of those people because there was nothing wrong that I was doing. So I had, I had to stand for myself. 
myself. I had to be deterministic in what I was doing. And if I had, uh, what, if I have one more minute, I would like to share this in incident of uh, when I realized this uh, concept of equality and gender parity in the workplace. I was having a wonderful life, corporate and the college, everything was great. And then I appeared for this interview at the age of 25 for the head of HR position for a multinational organization in the United Kingdom. And uh, they, they had about 3,500 employees. So that was quite a jump from my previous organization that way. And there was one question that was asked to me by the CEO. Um, and he asked me, um, he gave me a situation and he said, okay, how would you perform in this situation? What would you do? And my answer always had this word, he. If the employee behaves this way, then he would be given this he, he, he. There was a lot of he in my conversation. There was no she at all. And then he was like, Supriya, I don't know if this is lack of experience or this is lack of um, realization, but can't, can't we have a she employee? Why are you always after he, he, he? And I felt so embarrassed. I'm like, okay, myself being a woman, am I not realizing that I'm not even taking care of the she part of the employees? Henceforth, I have been uh, really uh, vigilant about the fact whenever I speak, it's he or she together, they should come and it should not be a he, he, he kind of stuff. So I think the concept of asking this question was, uh, you know, women then and now. Devjani has experienced 20 years, 25 years. Supriya's experience. Uh, you know, a decade for now. So uh, women have to always go through these, uh, I should say, struggles that they have to be fearful, they have to be fearless, they have to be confident, they have to be bold. Only then they can have, at least in the corporate world, I can say, because we are uh, talking about the professional life today. So then only they can have what they want. Generally, it happens that uh, what we want, what is our target, what is our goal, we have to be very specific and we have to be as you said about gender equality also. So all these points, if a woman is carrying with herself, wow, then she is the king. She is the queen of the organization. She is king for herself. Amazing. So coming to my next question, I think our audience are also enjoying. Ladies and gentlemen, we, as I said, we are Facebook Live, we are Global TV Live. So my question to both of you, uh, I would request you to answer this question in two lines and three lines only. Uh, there is a reason behind this why I'm asking you. So generally, uh, you know, uh, the globe is talking about uh, a lot about uh, compassion, empathy, collaboration. What do you think as, uh, you know, about women as uh, collaborators? But because the general saying is that uh, women are enemies of each other. What do you say about this? And Supri, I would like you to start this and then we'll move to the journey. Uh, if I have the permission to be authentic, which I have, even if I don't have, I take it. So I have the permission to be authentic. I'm assuming that. And this statement, yes, I have heard a lot of it. And I have also seen it happening. I have been a witness to it, but I have never experienced it with myself. So whether it was at the workplace or even at home, even at home, I, I have a brother and uh, myself. So we are two. And at home also, when it comes to uh, gender equality or something like that, I think I get more of a benefit as compared to my brother. I am more talked of. I'm given more importance. So that is the kind of uh, upbringing that I've had. And when I went outside in the corporate world, things were a little different where I did see women not wanting uh, to be really helpful or uh, progressive in terms of promoting other women. However, it never actually happened to me. My only experience of working with women tells me that women bosses are better than male bosses. Yes. And they also support each other because that has been my experience and that's what I can vouch for. And at the same time, I can proudly also vouch for the fact that if I am having an interaction with a female, whether at or outside office, it would always be the kind of thing we would support each other. And I would also want to see her grow and myself grow at the same time, not one. I mean, th there's no or, it's always and you grow and I grow. It's not the or concept. Thank wow, you. Beautiful. Over to you, Dejani. Yeah, so, um, you know, um, I'm not sure I actually believe in these generalizations at all. Um, I've had a mix of both, uh, but that's life, right? I mean, you don't have a, a linear trajectory anyway in any part of life. So I've had the lovely woman bosses and women peer groups. Um, I've learned 
um, I've actually transacted uh, regularly. They're still in touch. Um, we continue to nurture each other. We continue to foster each other's successes. We feel proud about each other. So that's one community. Now there's also a group of people, I do acknowledge, and especially of the women folk, who don't come across as very easy people to live with, right? And um, uh, I've done a little bit, uh, I won't say research, as I said, I'm, I'm very fascinated by character studies and case studies, right? Because, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I do get into a bit of character research when I meet with some of these people. But a little bit I've realized is, you know, women go through a lot in life. Let's understand that. Okay, it's very easy for us to judge them uh, and jump into judgments the moment we see something which doesn't fit into our way of thoughts or our way of life. But then let's understand that women go through a lot both in the personal front as well as the professional front. Um, you know, wh when she comes into the corporate life, she can't really be two people. She brings both of those together. And sometimes the harshness or the difficulties that a woman, despite everything, goes through, it just gets manifest in certain different ways. Now, there could be differences in which she treats her child. There could be differences in which she behaves at her household. Similarly, it's a different behavioral pattern that she brings to the workplace. So a woman leader can be a different kind, but it is not necessarily that they cultivate that image consciously. It happens because of certain circumstances and reasons. And uh, given a choice, I would probably want to get into more of a coaching or a little more of a nurturing situation with them. Because many a times when you hold those hands and when you take them through the trajectory and you are empathetic and compassionate towards them, I find that, you know, they do come around and they do start realizing that, you know, what, what are the things that they're doing wrong and they should not be doing. Uh, <clears throat> that's what my corporate experience has been. Personally, I have been absolutely fortunate. Um, the biggest, biggest misconception of a mother in law I have a golden story there. So I refuse to believe anything about any mother-in-laws. I'm sorry about that. Um, I would not be a successful professional today had it not been for that solid, rock solid lady in the house. Um, my daughter was 14 days. Believe me, she was 14 days. I was breastfeeding her when my first semester exams in FMS New Delhi was happening. And who was it holding my child in the car? I took a permission that because of the three hour paper, I had to break it into one and a half hours each. And I had to come back to the car and I had to nurse my child. And it was my mother-in-law who was carrying my child sitting in the car. You know, I, I have many, many more stories to tell like this. So I, I will not believe even for a moment that you know every woman or whoever behaves in an aberrational way is a bad person at the back of it. I think it takes two to tango. If you want to be good to somebody, you also need to exercise good. And that's predominantly what a magical experience, again, using Supriya's words, needs to be for yourself. I strongly believe in that. I think you two uh, beautiful duo today have proved, uh, proved the world wrong, that women are enemies, instead women are strong collaborators. If they have the wish from inside, if they have the will, women can be the collaborators. And they are already, since you mentioned that your daughter, when she was 14 days old, so I believe, you know, it was long back. Uh, so uh, since then, if the collaboration is coming and the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law duo, I mean, kudos to your mother-in-law and kudos to you. Great. She's 90. Today, she's 90. Um, and I often have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with her. Awesome. I think we need to keep a separate session with you, uh, with the <laughs> how to be good mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws both. Wow. <laughs> coming to the next, Supriya, the more I am getting to know you, the more I'm getting inquisitive to know more about you. So, who is Supriya? I would say expect the unexpected. You already said magical and all those things. So expect the unexpected is definitely expected from you. Uh, Devjani, so thank you Supriya for sharing this. Uh, Devjani, I was, uh, going through your profile and a lot I have, because we uh, are from same profession HR. I know you are famous as, uh, you know, Bengal Tigress. So our audience would yes, love to know what makes you a Bengal Tigress. Oh dear, dear. <laughs> <clears throat> it, it, it started off as a joke by one of my chairman actually, uh, in a company that I worked in, which was called Kony, Kony Travels. And uh, he used to say that, you know, a tigress marks her territory very carefully. 
um, Devjani does the same. So if you know your stuff, and, you, and if you really want to engage with her, make sure that you know the turf that you're walking on. Otherwise, don't go near. You know, you, you will get scathed. Um, you know, she's a hardcore professional. She marks her territory. She is unrelenting when it comes to nonsense. But if you have the goods with you, she will also take you along as a camera, as, as, as a part of the camera lyric circle. So it started off with, you know, Raji Wagner, who was my chairman in Pony, always referring to me um, as, you know, the BT, the BT, the BT, the Bengal Tigers. Every time I would enter into any meeting, so much so that our Swiss, um, uh, you know, population, because it was a Swiss company. So whenever they would come down for their board meetings, I would wonder, what is this BT? You know, and I would, I would pray to God that he would not break into explaining it. Uh, at least he kept my trust. Um, however, later on in life, I think, Shafari, when I look back and I look at my teams, um, a lot of these very young girls and boys who've been part of my teams, uh, who've grown with me, who've actually moved with me across organizations, they've cherished uh, working with me and I have drawn so much inspiration from them. I think they've told me that um, I, I typically work like a tigress in the sense that, uh, you know, they are my cubs. So, and honestly, yeah, Panji, okay, na? And honestly, kya hota hai na? HR becomes a whipping boy for many people. Okay, it's a thankless job, right? You bloody take every shit in the organization. I'm sorry for the abuse. Please cut that out. Edit, edit. But you take every bit of that and yet at the end of the day, it's somebody else walking away with the credit. Generally, the business manager or the marketing head. Okay. And you are sitting there like a dumb duck. Okay. And you're being painted as if, you know, you were a blonde without a shred of um, intellect in your head. Now, when I got used to that, I, I started listening to it once, twice, thrice. Then I started realizing that agar main unke defense mein nahi aati ho, my little cubs are actually getting painted wrong. Right. So that is the time when I actually took out my fence. You know, I said enough is enough. You can't get painted like that because we are as good, as brilliant as any other man or professional on a day. Okay. I could read a balance sheet better than my CFO. Let me tell you that. I can talk about profitability and cash flows in a company better than any manager, okay? I have handled mergers and acquisitions more, both in international and in national terrains. I've built up organizations from scratch. I've also acquired, okay? Today, I, I, I'm in an advisory seat with startups. I look at incubation labs in schools and colleges, okay? What? HR doesn't know? HR can't talk? So that is why I protect my territory. I it is not about HR, it is about the tigress. Tigress knows. So that, that is the tigress. Okay, the tigress is in the forefront. Don't come near me and try telling me what my job is. Don't underestimate people who are part of this fraternity because we work damn hard. When everything is happening wrong in the organization, it's the HR guys who rise up and take on all the wrong things, wrongdoings, and try and get it done. And I've personally dirtied my hands so many times in doing it that I'm not going to hear anything different from anybody else. So I think I developed a lot of the tiger syndrome because of that. So today, if you ask me, yes, I mark my territory. I don't allow any, any, anybody to say anything and everything about both personal as well as my function. And I definitely protect my fraternity. I don't like hearing no naysayers about what an HR can do because they're brilliant people. So the more I'm listening to the Bengal Tigress and the more I'm listening to expecting the unexpected, more questions are coming to my mind. I don't know how to stop those questions because time is running out of uh, you know, my hands. Uh, we have only 11 minutes more to go. So I don't know how to stop and where to stop because uh, 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 I, if I think about it, one, two, three, four, four, five questions I still have in my mind, which I immediately want to ask. But uh, let me make it very quick. Uh, as we all know, Women's Day is around the corner and we all have been talking about this. Uh, one message, Devjani, that you would like to give to uh, women fraternity. I mean, besides becoming the tigress, what, what one message? Well, I don't think everybody needs to be a tigress or that I, you know, I wear that label very hard. Um, it, it's something which has come about in the course of life. I'm sure somebody else can be a peacock uh, or a deer or a beautiful leopard for all you know. Uh, and they're, they're very, very welcome to that fraternity. Um, I don't know if I have a single message or I, I'm, I'm confused myself because uh, intrinsically women are a very powerful group. Okay, they, they are anatomically, psychologically, they are very, very powerful. 
Um, it, it's just that the physical part is where the men actually uh, uh, can take a walk over us. Otherwise, in, in every other strike, we are far better. But it's not about who's better and who's worse. I, I'd like to please reach out and appeal to women folk is, is, is look, look at yourself first and then look at others. Okay, before you even go and judge others, steal yourself, bring yourself up to that level where you can talk from a position of confidence, where you have the conviction that carries you through. Because uh, again, going back to genuineness and being honest to yourself, if you can keep those values intact within yourself, believe you me, you earn respect automatically. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to ask for it. At the same time, I think remaining simple and grounded and being humble enough to understand that you've been very fortunate in life uh, and, and exercising gratitude at every step are some of the things that women continuously need to foster because otherwise all those tags of being empathic and compassionate, you know, they become hollow, they become just jargons. And I've also seen a lot of our brethren, women, actually being very mean, very, very mean when it comes to it, very manipulative, very, very crude, and yet they would like to be counted as, you know, people who bring those qualities to the table. So stay simple and grounded, fill your life with gratitude, be, be, be thankful for what you've got, and raise your bar, raise your bar at every level. Okay, learn and create a benchmark for yourself. That's the only way you, you can continue to charter and master the ability. I think very powerful message coming from a powerful woman. And yes, I agree. Uh, Supriya, what will be your message to women fraternity? Devjani has said it all. <laughs> Devjani has said everything, honestly, not judging and accepting other women the way they are. First of all, you need to accept the way you are and be proud of it and be respectful of the fact. You know, it's very common. An overweight uh, woman entering a gathering and the other women start feeling, oh, oh she, why, why is she so fat? And a, a working mother not attending the PTA of her kids. Oh, what a terrible mother she is. Or a pretty woman getting raised or getting a promotion. Oh, she must have done something out of the way. So those are the kind of things that women are... Uh, Probably that's the way we've been brought up and that's the conditioning we've had, which we need to change. And how do we change it? Devjani has also given great ideas for doing it. She has also shown us the path on how to go about it. And the last thing I would want to add to it is, let's not get affected by the system of patriarchal bargain and let's not try to exercise power in that manner. Just feel the magic. It's already within you. So you don't need to look outside. It's everything is within you. Just feel that magic and everything will fall in place. I can't agree more, uh, you know, with both of you. My message is very simple and clear. Being a woman uh, should be your, anybody's supreme achievement and not your deepest fear. That's Celebrate true. womanhood, fill yourself with self-confidence and let that fuel empower you to soar towards your dreams. That would be my message to all the women fraternity who are listening to us today and who are there with all of us in this journey. And here I would like to invite now Mr. DK Bakshi. Uh, let us, he, because he being doing so many things and taking so many initiatives for women empowerment, for women uh, nurturing, women motivation. Uh, sir, we would like to know your thoughts about today's talk and what do you think about as uh, Women's Day is around the corner? Can we hear from you, sir? I think so. You are on mute. We are not able to uh, hear you. I think he's trying to fix up his uh, audio and video. Uh, sir, can you hear us? Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Devjani Roy, my God, what a passionating, what a background. You really have a rocky background. I am so impressed to meet you today. 
In fact, I have been telling this Shefali Sangal for so many months, and today I have the proud privilege of looking at you and knowing your story. It has been an extraordinary women power. You are the real women power of this world. Passionate, beautiful, how tough it would have been and how you made it easy and what you are contributing to the world is enormous. I am really delighted uh, that I finally got connected to you. It is a great day for me, indeed, Dev Janiji. And then I'm looking at this Supriya Sharma. My God, Supriya is magical. <laughs> I can't say woman, she's a girl, yeah. <laughs> so this is magical uh, power and uh, turning negativities into positivities and making things to happen and uh, unbelievable talk both of you had and I must thank 10 SI caller Chef Ali Sengal. I have given her many names, Women on the Wheels and 10 S, who has really moderated it so beautifully. There's so much of learning uh, from your, uh, you know, uh, this particular session. And I can tell you that I, I believe in this power of positivity leading to power of perseverance, leading to power of persistence, leading to power of passion, leading to power of performance, leading to power of progress, leading to power of pride. And when you look at this hashtag women power, a global movement, around the world where we are targeting 1 million to be on this platform in 2024. And I can tell you it is going to be much, much, much before 2024. And I must admit here that uh, the women themselves are their own empowerment. They need not to get empowerment from people. They are themselves empowered. A, a woman who has excelled as a mother, who actually creates families, and in fact, a woman who nurtures families, nurtures people. And then when I see women who are not only housewives and then they do other things in life, uh, which is the corporate world, managing, maintaining, and making it so strong, especially when we see the COVID times, uh, how tough it has been for men, okay, but women have had very tough situation. So all of you are really power to this world and I am also known as honorable woman in this process of hashtag women power global movement and people call me mad, but I am certainly mad about it and our mentor, uh, Dr. Kiran Bedi, uh, she is the number one women power and many women power have come on board. And now the beauty of this session is that ladies and gentlemen who are, who are right now watching it around the world, see the beauty of women power, that women power themselves are leading this uh, concept of women power around the world. That is where I feel more delighted and more excited today that it's not DK Bakshi who's doing. And you know, Devjani and Supriya, Three Saturday have already given to people. She has taken, Anshu from Mumbai has taken, Spain has taken. So I am left only with one Saturday. I want to keep one Saturday with me for sure. But the power of this women is that women is quality. I will say that there cannot be a greater quality than a woman, whether it's your mom, it's your wife, it's your daughter, your sister colleagues, bosses. And um, I was uh, having the other day a discussion uh, where uh, we said that women are certainly the most powerful people. I was uh, interviewing Vice Chancellor of uh, Delhi Technological University, uh, Professor Singh. He said, women does not need a power, but they are empowered already. Tell women to be careful with other women, they have issues, but men are always supportive of women. There's also another dimension which we need to look at. And when we look at uh, excellence in women, uh, this is a way of life. You just see, you give anything to women, she will multiply it. She will multiply it. She will make it more stronger. 
If you have a child, she will make a child a great woman or a man out of an, nothing. So unheard, unbelievable, unknown as women nurtures. So I'm extremely happy uh, uh, to uh, watch you live and uh, uh, take this forward. I would request Devjani ji more and more to get involved into this. Supriya ji more and more to get involved into this. Let's multiply. Let's tell the world and and get into get into all areas wherever we can do because at this moment it is a moment which is. Uh, so powerful last eight nine months i have really worked very hard on this and i believe we have the power of taking it forward to uh, any level in the power and united nations certainly will support us corporates are going to be supporting us during this um, you know moment of uh, gender equality so i have on behalf of global talent and on behalf of hashtag women power global moment uh, my sincere thanks from the core of my heart to Devjani ji and Supriya ji for contributing to this beautiful day of Saturday, Women Power Day, and sharing your story of excellence, 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 and excellence. Let other women learn from your experiences, from your magic, from your power, from your, your both women of substance, women of excellence, and women making a difference. You are mad, making a difference. And thanks, Chef Ali, for being there and supporting this. And uh, look forward to catching with you someday, face to face. Days are going to be, we are now almost close of uh, pandemic. So we are at the, I call it BC, DC, and AC. <laughs> BC we cannot get, and DC is uh, almost at the pack end. And AC, I think we are very close to AC now. And I wish that uh, we again go back to those days where we hug, we talk, we eat, we sleep, we travel, we earn, we learn together, all of us, and do not have any issues of social distancing. Human race cannot be having social distancing. And as so far as India is concerned and Indian power is concerned, we as Indians believe one world, one love, one human race, and one women. We respect our Sanskriti here. For all those nationalities who are watching us, Indian tradition, Indian rituals are one world, one love, one human being, one human race, and one women. We respect our women, whatever said and done. And there may be issues, there may be challenges, but we overcome that because we have produced some of the best women in our world, be it uh, any, any field, and even in today in the corporate world globally as well. And we have the power of having extremely wonderful women with us. And today you can see India is healing the world with the vaccination from India. And there are a lot of women involved in these vaccination programs. Yesterday also you can see at NASA, an uh, Indian girl with Tika, and she is launching. So how beautiful it is. How <laughs> you feel so excited. So we have the power of Indianization. We have the power of creating uh, a different world for both men and women. We have to be respectable. To the women. Having said that, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very kind words. Really, really, very kind words. It has been an honor being part of this platform and uh, you know sharing this evening with um, Supriya, Shafali, of course, and yourself. Um, honor and privilege both. And look forward to really golden days of women empowerment ahead. Thank you so much, Devjani ji. I couldn't be more delighted and more fortunate than being a part of this initiative and getting to meet such people of substance. I am totally, totally inspired. Thank you very much, Supriya. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words and... Uh, Again, as always, motivating women at the end of the show, at the talk of the show, at the uh, end of the show, we all are motivated. And yes, the commitment uh, from Devjani and Supriya, I can see from their faces is already there to support this hashtag Women Power. And uh, offline, we'll connect soon and take it forward. 
So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. Have a wonderful evening and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you so much, Devjani and Supriya, for joining us today for this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.